most of us have quite comfortably concluded that the muse knows little or nothing of our own rustic England. While the cottage taproom often re-echo a beautiful song, the so-called cultured people lament that we have been forgotten in this divine almonry. Meanwhile, folk song dies with a rapid mortality that is horrible to contemplate. The clapperings of the steam binder have killed it from the harvest field. The bored schoolmaster slays it in the children by his crusade against all dialect but his own. Folk song, unknown in the drawing room, hunted out of the school, chased by the chapel deacons, derided by the middle classes, and despised by those who are uneducated in the three R's, takes refuge in fastnesses of tap rooms, poor cottages, and outlying hamlets. It is harboured in the heathen kingdoms, a treasure to be sought and found in nooks and crannies, underneath much mental and some moral lumber. It comes out very shyly late at night and is heard when the gentry have gone home to bed. Those who harbour it most will often be the first to assure you that they have never heard of such a thing. So, just as you are wearied out about to abandon the search, the songster will rather apologetically remember a fragment, maybe a complete ballad, that grandfather used to sing. And there, all at once, you're face to face with some modal melody. some Aeolian and Mixolydian air from the spacious days of Elizabeth, possibly from the Wars of the Roses, or even earlier than that. Thank mm -hmm. you.
love song cannot really grow old or fail in its charm. It can touch and stir the heart of the 20th century man if he will yield to it just as deeply as it did in the faraway days of its birth. The native melodies of England can charm the children as they charmed the fathers. They can perhaps do more. They can turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers and it past and present together in great and unaffected sympathy. And that is no mean proof of their vitality. take his song. We enrich him by making him more conscious of his own treasures. We exalt instead of depressing him. And for ourselves, we gain not only something new and strange, but imperceptibly a kinder, wider and more liberal outlook. What we took to be waste products proved to be rituals 